This week, AI got a government job, Google gave its robots the ability to think for themselves, while Meta pushed forward with its AI parrot smart glasses. This is no longer about chatbots. AI is taking on real world roles and taking over physical bodies. The pace of change is staggering, so let's break down the biggest stories in this week's AI news segment. The first item I want to talk about is from ChatGPT. It is a new update called Pulse. So it will, based off your chats, based off your calendar, it is going to give you personalized daily updates from everything that you put into ChatGPT, and it's going to look like what I'm showing you on the screen now. So I can say, hey, here are some tips about your ACL recovery, because it knows that you have a recovery that you're going through based off calendar events, based off you talking to ChatGPT, so it's able to just proactively say, hey, check this out. ChatGPT has a whole list of parent controls and age prediction stuff going on as well. So they're basically saying if ChatGPT predicts or detects a child, it thinks, hey, we're talking to a child, it should look different than if it's talking to an adult. So it's going to change the output for the child versus the adult. That is one of the updates they've released. They also have parent controls. So if you have a child 13 or older, you can actually just email your child. They can join ChatGPT now, but they will get guided responses based off their age. And also as a parent, you can disable memory and chat history from your child. So those are just some of the two features they added to start. You can also receive notifications if it says, hey, my child is in distress based off the conversations, based off things that it's asking. It can give you a notification to say, hey, check this out. This is what's going on with your child. There's also blackout hours where your teen won't be able to access ChatGPT. The last piece of news for OpenAI is its upgrades to Codex. So Codex now is using ChatGPT 5. Adobe is updating Photoshop beta with its generative fill feature, which is very popular. So if you have like an image, it'll fill out the background. Well, if you can see here, they have now added Nano Banana as one of the options, as one of their partnered models. So Adobe has teamed up with Google to add Nano Banana to Photoshop. Notebook LM got a slew of updates, so you can now create flashcards, quizzes, and new reports. So if you're on Notebook LM itself, on the right, you can just like one click create a quiz and it's going to generate in the bottom here and you're going to see we're going to generate a quiz based off our entire notebook that quick that easy we can do the same thing with flashcards and it is now generating flashcards for us if we click the pencil we can actually decide the number of cards we can decide what we want to prompt it with what we want our flashcards to look like we can even adjust our quiz we can say okay make this a really hard quiz and give us more questions and can we make the quiz about this part of whatever we have in our notebook. And when it's done, you can click your quiz, for example, and here we go. We now have a quiz that we can go through and uh, that was totally lucky. Um, yeah, so anyway, I got, I got that one right too. I'm just so good at this, that one's wrong. But you can see we created a quiz based off all these different videos and articles I have about Japan. Google also has some new Gemini models. So we have Gemini 2.5 Flash and Flash Lite. So these are just enhanced versions of their Flash and Flash Lite models. Gemini 2.5 Flash Lite has better instruction following. It now has better answers. It's not as like talkative and it has a stronger multi-model and translation capabilities. The 2.5 flash model is using all the tools. So you can like search the web and do all that fun stuff. Well, it has better performance and you can do more complex stuff with it. They basically go on to say it has a 5% gain on the SWE bench verified compared to its latest release. Meanwhile, YouTube is enhancing its platform with more AI features, starting with YouTube studio updates. So there's a new feature called Ask Studio that is coming where it is an AI chatbot. You can talk back and forth with it. You can say, hey, how is my latest video doing? Or what is the community saying about my editing style? Or what, where are people dropping off in my video? So truthfully, are you guys still watching this? And if you are, consider subscribing and cover AI on a nearly daily basis. But it's basically like an entire large language model based around your YouTube channel. There's a new updated version of the inspiration tab. So it's going to like give you a list of ideas for videos. And it's even going to tell you why you should make this video. And I was just truthfully just checking. I still have the old version. So nothing to show there yet. 
There's also collaborations where you can actually invite other creators and that video will be shown on other creators channels. So all the audience kind of collaborate together and everyone can see the one video. Sometime in the last year, Google also released a feature on YouTube where you can translate a video into your native language. So right now you might be watching this video in a different language other than English. And if you have, or if you are, then you're gonna notice that the speech doesn't match my lips. Well, Google is working on an auto dub with lip sync. So not only will it do it in another language, but it's gonna match my lips when it speaks your language. There's also likeness detection. So if someone is using something that looks like you and it's gonna try to use AI to detect that, it's going to let a creator know saying, hey, someone is using something that is like you, especially with AI, anyone can be anyone. We have a new Gemini model called Gemini Robotics 1.5, which brings AI into the physical world. It's actually two different models of this. There's Gemini Robotics 1.5 and Gemini Robotics ER 1.5. So you can see here in the background, I have a video playing and they said, hey, here's a bunch of trash. Can you sort it out? So the model is able to look at the geolocation of the person asking, and then it's able to look up the laws for the current location, and then it's able to sort the stuff based off what it sees. So you can see it all sort properly. And then in this next demo here, they have like a bunch of fruit in a bowl, and they said, hey, can you sort the fruit into its proper location based off color. And I know this doesn't look super complex, but it's able to think and do this all on its own. So it's gonna put the banana in the yellow plate. It's gonna put the apple in the red plate. And then I, I don't know what the last one is. It's covering it. I think it's a pear. Uh, no, it's another apple, a green apple. So you can see it sort it and this is absolutely wild. And if you come to AI Studio and you click your model selection, we're gonna go to all for a second, and we scroll down, it should be here. There it is, Gemini Robotics ER 1.5 Preview. I've recently purchased a new robotic friend and I can't wait to have some fun with that. Anyone on Android can now use conversation editing within Google Photos. So you can see we have a photo here. They're saying, hey, could you make it look with a tropical background? The photo gets updated live for you. Chrome is getting an update with a ton of new AI features. So we have enhanced browsing with Gemini and Chrome. So there's gonna be this little icon in the top right. I don't have access to it yet, but that will just bring up Gemini. And you can actually see it says, hey, can we talk to the current tab or different tabs? There's also agentic browsing. So you can be on this tab here and it has like a list of stuff in your Gmail and you can say, hey, can you purchase these items? It is able to open up a new tab, go to Instacart, put all the things in your cart, and then place the order all from your Chrome browser. So you don't have to leave, don't have to go anywhere else. It is all built into Chrome. Be able to also make it go through your search history. So you can say, hey, I was looking at this website and it had this, this, or that, and it's able to look through and find the proper website that you're looking for. Need a summary of a YouTube video, maybe like this one, where you don't have to watch the video anymore. Well, it has you covered. That is just some of the list of items that they shared, but probably the more interesting ones. See more without ever looking away. This is the new Meta Glasses with a built-in screen. The whole concept is you can ask a question and then in your display, you can see exactly whatever you asked. So in this example here, it said, hey, these tomatoes look great for Pico de Gallo and it is able to actually show you a recipe live in your glasses. In this photo here, you can actually see the little band that they have on. So it actually has like arm tracking based off the band. So you can do things with your fingers and you can do like pinch and zoom and all that kind of stuff, similar to Apple's Vision Pro, where you can kind of control the thing with your fingers. So imagine you want to respond to someone, it pops up in your glasses, and then just with your fingers here, you can go back and forth to quick messages and you can say, hey, hey, I'm leaving now, I'm on the way. And you never really have to pick up your phone or do anything. It is like a lot better than the original Meta Glasses with the screen. Probably the coolest feature they showed off during their event was the live caption feature. So the glasses are able to look at someone and then do a like actual caption inside your glass view so you can actually read what they're saying as they're saying it, which is wild. Truthfully, during the event, Mark Zuckerberg's demo failed twice, but I like the fact that it's live, it's real, it's like not pre-staged. That's not the only update Meta did this week. Do you like AI Slop? Well, I got good news for you. So there is a Vibes platform, which is on the Meta app. 
and the meta app is what you use to connect your glasses but basically you're able to make ai slop and then post it and then you're going to get like a traditional TikTok, Instagram, real styled interface where you can just kind of swipe through and access all of this different slop that exists on the meta platform. You can now send your Zoom avatar to represent you for your meeting. So you don't have to show up anymore. You can actually create an avatar of yourself and then you can use the avatar you create to show up to your Zoom meeting. They're doing more than just AI avatars. They're also doing real-time voice translation, which is going to use AI to translate what the speaker is saying in real time. So if you're part of a Zoom meeting and someone's using another language other than your native language, it should be able to translate. There's also a new version of its AI assistant, which you can schedule meetings with it or create video clips. I'm not gonna attempt to pronounce the name, I don't wanna butcher it, but there's an AI singer that was on the billboards and it signed a $3 million deal. So the question is, is this the future of music? Love to know what your thoughts are, leave a comment down below. The last piece of news is probably the most interesting to me. Albania appoints the world's first ever AI made minister. Do not be confused because I was confused in the beginning as well. This is not a minister for AI, but an actual minister that sits on the cabinet to make decisions. And it is an actual AI model sitting on the cabinet. What are your thoughts on having AI help make decisions for an entire country? I think it can be either really good or really bad. I don't know how I feel about it yet. Let me know in the comments below. That is like a quick round off of AI news. Let me know what your thoughts are as a whole. Did I miss anything important? Drop a comment down below, let me know. Don't forget to like the video, tell the algorithm, hey, I enjoy this type of content. I wanna see more of it. Don't forget to subscribe. I cover AI on a daily basis. Thanks for watching and I'll see you tomorrow with another AI video. to be